Hi everyone, Joe Neat here, executive producer on Sea of Thieves with another dev update for everyone. So to begin with, I'll talk a little bit about the latest build that we're putting out. So uh, first of all, we fixed a couple of issues that we'd introduced in the previous build, what, uh, one of which was instability, uh, where the game was crashing a little bit more than, um, than we or anyone would like. So that has been addressed um, in the build coming out today. We've also addressed cannonball knockback because that was causing damage to your own crew members. So that doesn't do that anymore. That wasn't by design, that was accidentally introduced uh, just by some of the work that was kind of ongoing in a different area. So alongside that, the, the main kind of update here is that it's the Sunken Curse has now been introduced as a new build rat adventure. So the Sunken Curse build rat adventure is intended to encourage you to explore underwater. So what's happened uh, in the world, these kind of cursed mermaid statues have now appeared. Uh, they're going to be around kind of uh, uh, sunken reefs in the world and around islands. And so you're going to have to work together um, with other members of your crew to destroy these. So if you kind of swim up to them, they're going to start doing doing you damage, um, and if you start doing damage to them, they will regenerate if you don't manage to kind of kill them quickly enough. Uh, there are different strength uh, cursed uh, mermaid statues as well, and so again, like you're going to have to figure out which colour is the strongest and how many people are going to have to work together to defeat it, but it's got a maximum of four players will have to defeat like the strongest statues. So we're introducing the Wailing Barnacle cosmetic set alongside this that you can earn from going out and taking um, down these statues, uh, and alongside that there's going to be a Wailing Barnacle kind of tattoo set which will just be available in shops for everyone to purchase. So we're really looking forward to seeing how this adventure goes down with players because this is the first time we've really kind of encouraged people to go underwater and explore and work together under there, you know, with the threats like the, the, there, like the sharks and stuff and, and the threat of potentially other players above the water too. So it's going to be really interesting to see how this one plays out. For this one, the fact you only have to have a maximum of kind of four players means you can do it within a galleon crew, or, but you can still uh, crew up with other crews out there in the world to go and take this stuff down together. So again, that'll be interesting just to see how this plays out. So aside from obviously the build that's going out, one of the things I wanted to talk a little bit about is just our release process. And so you may have noticed over the last few weeks we've been in like accidentally introducing little issues into the build that we did, wouldn't want to be introducing. So, you know, the obviously the stability issue that went out um, last week, along with the cannibals doing damage to your own crew. And so we're really looking at our process at the moment about how do we make sure we get the right amount of kind of test and verification time on a build prior to it going out. So lots of conversations going on around this. It's going to take a little while for us to really figure out the, the right approach. Um, but it's a real area of focus for us now because, you know, we, d we don't like introducing kind of steps backwards. Uh, into the build. We just want to be introducing cool new content to players. So one other thing that was recently announced is that we're going to be at San Diego Comic Con where we're holding another panel. Uh, really excited about this. I think it's on Saturday the 21st of July, which is cool. Like really nice to be a weekend slot. Um, I think previously we were on the Wednesday or Thursday, so hopefully this will mean more people get a chance to attend. And really excited to be to be going along there. Love going to all of the cons um, and just chatting to people and meeting members of the community and uh, seeing all the kind of cool cosplay and things that people get up to. And we're going to be doing a mix of things here, some of which giving a bit of a look at some of the brand and licensing stuff we've got to kind of support Sea of Thieves. Uh, also a little glimpse and, and some conversation around some of the upcoming content uh, in the game. And also going to make uh, as much time as possible for that kind of panel Q&A side of things because the thing we've loved the most about E3 has been those panels with fans, has been the E3 Coliseum and the way we could just chat and talk openly and answer questions. So really want to get another opportunity to do that at San Diego Comic Con for the panel. So really looking forward to it. It's going to be a great time. Hope to see some of you there um, and there'll be a few more people um, from the team coming with me as well. So yeah, it should be a really good time. We are also planning to record that. So we will get that up online beyond the, you know, after the, the Comic Con itself. Uh, so that people who aren't able to attend will get to see what we talked about and, and everything else. So yeah, so everyone should have something to look forward to with that. So a couple of other topics that were just um, kind of close to my heart, I guess, and I wanted to talk a little bit about here. One is just about the design roles that we've got open at Rare. So we opened up a couple of uh, kind of contract design roles for for the Sea of Thieves team uh, quite recently, and a lot of people were kind of commenting online, "Oh, I, I can't apply for this. I didn't go to to college or to university. I don't have the qualifications uh, for this kind of work." Whereas like, like that's not ne necessary for, for getting a job in the, in the games industry, honestly. Like, there's so many tools that you can learn outside um, of your current day job, you know, at the weekend at home, um, and like Unity and Unreal and, and all of the kind of engines and, and editors and stuff that you would be working with at a, a studio like Rare or, or other game studios. And so you really can learn the skills and show that you've got a passion for things by starting to get kind of 
hands-on with these engines and figuring things out and really just starting to try and make things. And like, if you combine that like clear drive and willingness to learn, along with a real understanding of the company that you're applying for and the games that they're working on, like by putting forward suggestions around how you would improve it or things that you think are great and why, like there's, you can really stand out from all of the other CVs that kind of come towards um, games companies like ourselves. Because we obviously get loads of applications for every job. And a lot of them, people have experience, previous experience from other companies, but like not all of the people that are applying have that same passion and that same level of knowledge about the game that we're making here. And so like, it really does stand out when people really understand Sea of Thieves, because it's one of the hardest things, right, is understanding the core of what a game is and, and the heart of it and the spirit of it. And so all of the people in our community understand it because you play it all the time. And so if you combine that with a clear willingness to learn and, and an understanding of areas that you need to grow, it, like we will consider those applications. And you know they, they, they stand out, they make us want to talk to you, and like there's, I'm, I guess I'm just trying to give people encouragement that just because you don't have specific qualifications, you didn't go to university to study um, game design or, or other areas of, of kind of games development, there are ways that you can gain skills, there are ways you can gain knowledge, and there are ways that you can get your foot in the door if this is the career that you're really, really excited and interested in. Um, so yeah, don't be put off by the fact that you don't have the, the specific qualifications. Like There's loads of people that work here that didn't go through a traditional kind of game uh, course at, at university, but have impressed us with their, um, you know, their, their ambition and their willingness to learn and, um, and their love for for the stuff that we do. So yeah, like the, the roles are still up there. I think one thing to be clear though is that they, because they're contract roles at the moment, the design roles that we have specifically up there, um, it means you're gonna have to have a kind of valid UK uh, work visa. So whether you're a UK or EU citizen, um, or you've got a visa from another way, we wouldn't be able to provide a visa for these specific roles just for people who are gonna be applying from, um, from maybe other parts of the world. Doesn't mean that in the future when we have full-time roles, um, we definitely do support kind of visa applications and things, but um, just, to be, just to be clear about the roles that we have open at the moment. So. Um, um, good luck to everyone who is going to be uh, choosing to apply. Um, and yeah, we hope to see some, some CVs coming through. So one final thing I want to end on is that we've confirmed our plans now for Curse Sales and that content update. So we're going to be releasing uh, that lore kind of teaser trailer that we're putting together for it early next week. And at the same time, we'll be announcing the date for the Curse Sales update. So really excited to see that. I think it will give you a good feel for what you're going to be getting up to as part of the time limited campaign in Curse Sales. Um, and obviously the date so you can start penciling that in into your calendars. So yeah, really excited to be releasing that early next week. Uh, and I think that's it. So as always, thanks for listening. Look forward to the feedback as always, um, and the memes and the videos. And uh, we'll see you next week. Cheers. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to stay up to date with everything Sea of Thieves, then subscribe to our channel and click that little ship's bell for all those notifications. Cheers. Don't worry, I'll, I'll just wait here. I'm not doing, not doing much anyway. A couple of, couple of good videos there if you want to watch. <laughs>